Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm going to show you how to press in wheel bearings using a basic pressing kit. Let's go ahead and get started. The only thing you're going to need to complete this is one of these wheel bearing press kits. You can get these online, you can get them at automotive stores, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Fairly inexpensive. They range anywhere from, I believe, like 50 to a little over $100. This one here, I'll put the price and where I got it along the bottom. I want to say this was around, I think, 50 to 60 bucks, somewhere in that range, but I'll put it on there. So you're going to need this. You're also going to need your wheel bearings. Now, keep in mind, this bearing here is the type that's pressed in. These are usually found on front-wheel drive vehicles. The rear wheel bearings are usually all inside of the hub assembly. That's a completely different process to do that. I've done these on several vehicles before. If you want to see one of the videos, I'll put one across the top on one of the vehicles that I did one of the, the contained ones um, on. But this one here, this is pretty much what you get right here. And then this gets pressed into the hub assembly and then uh, slides all together. So let's go ahead and start popping out the old one so we can press this one in and I'll show you how to do it. What we have here is the steering knuckle and you can see there's the old bearing, it's pressed in. We've already gone ahead and we've removed the actual retainer ring that locks it in place. If you wanna see how to remove that, you can do so via the link above. The particular one that was used here was just a regular retainer ring. It wasn't an actual snap ring to where you can use the pliers to compress it and get it out. So I showed how to remove that if you wanna see that. So we have this in place. So we're gonna be pressing this one out, pressing the new one in. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over so you can see it because this is the side where the ring was, so it's going to be pressed out this way. If we flip it over on this side, you can see what we're dealing with here. When we took the hub assembly out, part of that housing came out with it, so you can see the bearings in there. But we're going to be pressing from this side here, so we're going to get a ring to fit right here to push out that way, and then it'll be pushing it out of this side here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to find an adapter that's going to fit right around this, this edge that's still exposed from the bearing that can push through. So I'm looking here. This one might fit, but no, that's just a little too big. So let's go with this one. That one fits in. It catches it enough that I think it'll push it through. So now that we have that one in place, let's go ahead and flip it over. So see what we got here because on this side we need probably this size ring perfect to fit right in there so that way it'll push the bearing through and bring it inside this piece here and then what we'll do is grab one of these and then this adapter will then go on that side so that way we can feed the threaded the threaded bolt all the way through onto the other end and then it'll, as we start tightening it it'll start pulling this in and pushing the bearing out, pressing it into this piece right here. So let's go ahead and get it all set up so we can start pressing it. So here's how it's gonna look set up. We have the plate on this end that's gonna be uh, pressing the bearing out. You have this end here with this, um, this nut right here of that bolt. And then on this side, kind of give you an idea how that looks, we have this piece here where the bearing is going to be pressed into. We have the plate on this end and then we have the tightening nut on this side which on at least on this particular kit that I have this is a 32 millimeter so that's what I'm going to be using here is a 32 millimeter to tighten that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hold the one end solid tightening up this this tightening nut here and that'll start pulling it in this way and pressing it out and then once that's done then we'll go ahead and set up the other the other setup to press the new bearing in. Now that I have everything set up, I went ahead and connected the 32 millimeter socket to a breaker bar. Then I have the 27 millimeter socket on the other end with the ratchet holding that all together. And then just basically you're going to secure that end and then tighten this tightening nut here in order to be able to get that to move. Now, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to use um, this 120 volt electric impact wrench. It's not a very strong one, but it's a lot easier than tightening with the breaker bar, but it's up to you however you want to do it. And then as we start to apply pressure, it's saying to push that bearing through and into here. But you want to make sure that 
this attachment here that you've selected is wide enough to be able to receive it. That way it doesn't get stuck there in the process. So you definitely want to make sure that you measure that right and make sure you have the correct one. Let's go ahead and connect and start tightening it so we can press it out. And I think we got it. There we go. The bearing raise has been pushed completely out. Let's go ahead and take this off so we can take a look at it. So this is the bearing raise that was lodged in there. Uh, basically what had happened is when we pulled the hub assembly out of there, the inner part of the raise came out with it and kind of messed up this whole bearing and it was hard to to pretty much get it out so we were able to still press it out and by hitting along this lip in here we were able to I'll show you right here take this bit and it fit right right inside there so it was able to push it out normally you want one that's big enough to kind of go like that but in this case we had to kind of work with what we had so that's out of there Pull this all out. You can see here inside of the steering knuckle. So we'll go ahead now and clean that up real good and then we'll get ready to press the new one in. So we'll go ahead and clean that real good, grease it up, and then we can press the new one in. We've gone ahead and cleaned in here real good so we can get ready to press the new bearing in. And I don't know if you can see in there, but it's pretty clean. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get the bearing ready. We have the new bearing here. You can see how it lays in right there. So we're going to press that in. But first, we're going to take a little bit of just some, some uh, grease. Just do a very thin, just a thin wipe around the whole thing. Just to give it a little bit of some lubrication to slide in there. So let's go ahead and grease it up, and then we'll get ready to press it in place. Like I said, you don't want to put too much, but just enough to give it a little bit of a slide in. And just kind of wipe it over. Good. So now let's go ahead and put it in place. Want to make sure you have it nice and straight. You can see it there. We're going to go ahead and Pull the correct adapter from our bearing press kit, get that lined on there, and I'll show you how to set this up so we can start pressing it into place. You want to find the right adapter that will pretty much cover the entire surface of the bearing. So we're going to go ahead and go with this one. Give this one a shot. Or actually, you know what, let's go with this one here. So you want to find the right one. So this one here looks about the size of our bearing. You want to make sure that the center piece drops into the inner bearing race where the hub uh, shaft, the spindle, will go through. I think this is it. Let's take it over there and check it and see if that's the right fit. If not, we'll come back and, and pick the next size. Let's go ahead and try that. That's a perfect fit there. Let me get a side view so you can see it. But that's how it should look. See how it's fitting exactly over the bearing. Perfect fit in there. The center piece right here drops right inside that so you have a perfect fit. Now one thing I did fail to mention is as you're putting your bearing in place before you start pressing it, if you're dealing with a bearing that has a magnetic side, you wanna make sure that you test for that magnetic side because the magnetic side is the one that goes on the inboard side so that would be pressed in face down so when it's back on your vehicle you want that magnetic side facing inside of this um, wheel knuckle. So make sure you check that before you press that in. So now that we have this set up, I'm going to go ahead and put all this together so I can show you exactly how it needs to go so we can start pressing it in. So everything has been put on and just to kind of show you what we did. Obviously here's the bearing. Then we have this adapter here that's going to be pressing down on it. We went ahead and used one of the washers that comes with the set, and then here we have our 
our tightening nut on this end. Now on this side of the knuckle, we have this adapter here with the plate on this side. So this is pretty much going to be allowing us to push the bearing in. Now you want to make sure that you're pushing the bearing in this direction. On the inside of this knuckle here, there's a like a lip which won't allow it to go any further. That's where you're headed. So you're pressing it in here through the open side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the impact wrench and start it. I'm not going to go all the way because I don't want to be creating pressure once it hits as far as it's going to go. So we're going to push it probably about three quarters in with the impact wrench. Then we'll come back using the breaker bar and then finish tightening it up at that point. Once we get it all the way in, then we can take our retainer ring and go ahead and put that, that ring right here on the outside of the bearing, locking it in from coming out in this direction. Then we can start putting a little bit of grease on the hub shaft and we'll press that into the inner part of the bearing race and that will wrap this up. Go ahead and take this off and see how far the bearing is and if we're ready to. All right, and you can see there, it's almost here to the back. It's pressed in actually quite nicely. So we're gonna go ahead now and press it in the rest of the way by hand. Get that all the way in. And then we'll go ahead and put the, the ring on it retainer ring here on this side and then we can get ready to put to uh, press the hub in Everything is pressed in all the way. So now on this side here, we're going to go ahead and put in this retainer ring. And that can just be pushed right in. I'll go ahead and get some pliers. Press that. There's a close-up. You can see the bearing in place. You can see the retainer ring is clipped in. Everything is nice and secure. So now we can go ahead and flip it over, put a little bit of grease on the hub shaft, and then we'll go ahead and press that into the uh, inner part of the inner race there on that bearing. And that will wrap up this video for how to press a bearing. Showing you what I did, we have as you can see here, we went ahead and put a plate here on the back side of the bearing, pretty much lining up here along the edge here on the knuckle. We went ahead, took the hub, greased up the shaft right there, and fed it in a little bit into the entrance there. And I'll try to get a better shot with better lighting, but I'm just showing you real quick. Loaded it in there, we went ahead and put the tightening nut and the washer, grabbed an adapter that fits right there for the size of that hub, right along that edge, so we can start tightening it and pushing it in. So let me get a close up so you can see here how it's fed in there, and then we're gonna start tightening it up by hand on this one. I don't know if I wanna use the impact wrench because I don't wanna feed it in too strong since we're pushing against the bearing. And pretty much we're gonna take it all the way in right before it's about to meet there and then it'll be completely snug in there. So let's get a close up for you. You can see right there the shaft on the hub assembly how it's feeding into the inner part of the bearing. You can see the grease there on it. And then right here you can see the adapter that we picked. Right there that's the perfect size to wrap right there on that edge. So we'll tighten that pushing that in. And then here on this side we just put a plate on this back side of the knuckle 
so that way we get that leverage to push it in. So we're going to go ahead and start tightening it by hand, and then that should wrap this up. Everything has been pressed in. Let's go ahead and take this off. Take a look at it. You can see here on this side, everything is pressed in nicely. We have the retainer ring nice and secure. You can see there the spindle and the hub shaft coming through. On this side here, looks good. Moving nice and smooth, nice and secure, nice and straight. I'll go ahead and get a close up so you can see how far we push that in. You don't want to go all the way to where you're hitting the bearing. You want to stop just right before it, but I'll get a close up of that for you. You can see the hub going into the knuckle there. Um, and I'm, unfortunately, I can't get a really good shot, but you're pretty much right near the bearing itself is how far you want to go in with that actually resting on the bearing. So it's, it's crucial that you, you do it by hand unless you have a, an actual press, so that way you're not going too far in and hitting it. Okay, well this wraps up this video on how to press your own bearings, covering from pressing out the old, pressing the new in, and everything that goes along with that in between. I hope this video was informative for you. I hope it helped you out. Please send me any questions, any comments. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. So please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.